I asked for a piece of lemon cake. <laughs> the cake is bigger than the piece. I think you need it from all angles. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. On <laughs> Tuesday. Hey folks, how are you today? Are you the person you want to be? Are you what your conscience has asked you to be? This is February 17th, 32 degrees, cloudy, dark at 6.30 a.m. No earthly bodies around, and I forgot to check on the heavenly bodies. But this is God time. And there is a great creation of God. Colors. So, what can we say different about God time? What is the answer? The answer is... No ego. No self. No separation. No ego. No self. No separation. Remembering. Right? Remembering. that God is the life inside us. Isn't that so? And when that spirit of God leaves us the body goes lifeless, right? And that spirit goes off to somewhere else. And that somewhere else we anthropomorphize as heaven, but it isn't gold streets, and it isn't angels, and it isn't St. Peter. It's something else. But whatever it is, it has been flowing for billions of years. Billions of years. That spirit of God has been flowing for billions of years, and you can feel it. You can feel it. You can feel it in the present, and you can feel it in the past. You can feel its past, and you feel its future coming. And we have to remember that we are all one. We are all that Spirit of God. And we are all creating this universe together and have been creating it for billions of years. And we'll continue to create it. We are doing it. That is what the Supreme Being is, isn't it? That's what God is, isn't it? the God that is inside of us. That's who is doing the creating, isn't it? And who is doing the operating?
And we're all one and we're all happy and we're all doing it together. And we don't take the God, the energy, we don't take it and hug it and hoard it for ourselves so that we can be better than somebody else and so that we can compete and so that we can think that we're superior. No. And that we're better and that we can give ourselves the credit. No, you don't give ourselves the credit. First of all, there isn't any self. No, the credit all goes to the oneness, the allness, the wholeness, the God, the great creator, the God that's inside of us, all of us together working to create and operate. And it's so beautiful, the hibernation of winter and then the awakening of spring and all those flowers that are coming up out of the ground and all those leaves that are going to unfold on the trees. Isn't it lovely? That's three and a half weeks. Half a week, a week and a half left of February and two weeks in March. God time. We forgot to turn on the timer. Have we been five minutes? That's the trick, to remember. To remember. The allness, the wholeness, the oneness, the others, and no self. And no ego. That's the trick. On video. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Are there trials and tribulations? Is there trouble anywhere? Wait a second, folks. We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our trouble share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends forget, forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll hold and shield thee. Thou will find thy solace there.
these are anthropomorphic words, but if you really look behind them, the truth is there. Take it to the Lord in prayer, isn't that what we're doing right now? Reminding ourselves of the wholeness, the beauty, the happiness, the oneness and the goodness and how we're all working together to make the universe to create and operate. If you look behind those old, old words with their limited English meaning, you will find the truth there that we've just been talking about. Isn't that so? Well, from the celestial to the secular, Pat Sarr and Sandy Blakeman and Madeline Chapin and Glendora had a vegetarian lunch together at the Trolley Line restaurant. It was a hot tofurkey sandwich. Uh, it was white bread and I asked Eddie to make sure that it was rye bread and 12 grain bread would have been a whole lot better. But mashed potato and peas and gravy and tofurkey. And we all cleaned up our plates. Pat was smart enough not to eat the white bread. And then you saw that huge piece of lemon cake that Tanya made, she makes her own pastries. Marvelous. And it was raining hard, and in Brainerd, the post office basement was flooded, and that delayed it. Madeline, but we all went together, and we all went south to Valencia to the Kinderhook Bank. And Tracy notarized the durable power of Turney. This is all pretty secular. But I guess it's good to have it done. And that Madeline is the primary and Pat is the alternate. And they are to take over everything when I lose my senses, which is going to be pretty soon. And it had to be notarized and dear Tracy Pratt, my banker did that. And then out of the blue, out of nowhere, where did this come? That gave Madeline power of attorney over the bank account. She can go to the bank anytime and take the money out of the bank. I didn't quite expect that, but it's okay by me. And of course it can be, it's revocable. Revocable. Anytime. But let it be. And the health proxy to make health decisions when I'm no longer sensible, which I say will be very soon. Uh, that didn't have to be notarized, it just had to be witnessed and Maxine and Sandy witnessed it for Pat Primary and Madeline alternate, that's the New York State Health Proxy, any state proxy really. Mainly no resuscitation, no machines, no hookups, no electricity. There is a thing in there about no antibiotics. That, that's not right. We cross that out. Cut it was an antibiotic that chased away the Malaise caused by the tick bite, by the Lyme disease in 2010 without that. So that's a question. What are we going to do about that? And then also the living will. Same, just about the same thing. And also the statement that Gundor wants to die at home. She, no ambulances, no doctors, uh, no machines. No resuscitation. Glendora wants to die at home. No hospitals. No nursing homes. No rehab centers. Glendora wants to die at home, as did her husband, and as did her mother, and as did her mother's father. That's the way it was in the old days. 
But Barbara Mooney takes exception to that because she was in a coma for three days and they kept her alive on the machines and she came back ten years ago. Oh, I don't know if we should think about all these things. What do you think? So today the job is to go and make ten copies of everything and hand them out to all of the people involved. Do you want a copy? Now the Seventh-day Adventist years ago used to have a health, public health forum. Everybody was invited. It was open to the public. It was free. And they told you recipes that were vegetarian and uh, how you could make whipped cream, for instance, out of, uh, what do you make it out of? You make it out of some... It was a soybean? No, it wasn't soybeans. It was out of something, but it was delicious. But then it was all vegetable. And they specified that you should drink eight glasses of water a day. That seemed to me out of reach. Eight glasses of water a day? Well, now the Seventh-day Adventists are saying you should drink five glasses of water today. This cup is too... This cup is two cups, which is eight ounces, which is a glass. And I've been, I've been able to do five, eight. I started out with five, but then I pushed it to eight. Eight glasses of water a day since January 18th, and this is February 17th, so that's a month. And it certainly is good. It certainly keeps your urinary system clean, clean and white. So it's doable eight glasses of water a day. Uh, that's only a cup every hour. Now I wanted to tell you about this malaise, whatever it was, it came through like a freight train and caused a fever of 103 degrees for four hours only. Then it went back to 98.6. Whatever that was, it's over. Back to 100%. But the important thing to note, folks, is that it was the body itself that healed it. It was the body itself. It was a bad rash on the gluteus maximus, about 40 blisters. And there was a rash on the back that I couldn't see, but it did itch for a little while, maybe an afternoon and the next morning. There was a huge inflammation around the elbow that itched terribly. But they all went away. That This thing went away in about a half a day. The 40 blisters turned into 40 scabs, but it all healed itself. Be careful to keep everything clean and washed and sanitized and put back tracing on it. But it was the body itself that healed it. It wasn't hospitals, it wasn't doctors, it wasn't medicine. And the body has done this over the years, and that's why I opted never to have medical care. Because the body was so few, so few, few, few uh, disruptions, and then whenever there was a disruption, it took care of it itself. Well, thank you. Thank you for doing all that you do. Thank you for doing, being one with us and running the universe, creating and operating. Thank you. A man came home from work discouraged. What's the matter, dear? 
they gave us aptitude tests at work, and I thought, oh, that's dreadful. And the man says, yeah, it's a good thing I own a company. Why do geese, geese, why do geese fly south in the wintertime, folks? It's really too far to walk. Jill Andros is having a party to celebrate her 60th birthday. She's hired the VFW Hall to do it in. She wants everybody to bring a potluck. And she is also celebrating a 20-year survivor of breast cancer. This is a good idea. She sent out invitations and bring as many friends as she can. Why did the woman call her son Hallie's Comet? Because he only came around to see her every 76 years. And a man called the editor of the newspaper and said, you put my name in the obituary column and I'm still alive. The editor was truly contrite and he truly, truly exercised himself to find a correction, a remedy. And then he said to the man on the telephone, tomorrow I'll put you in the birth column. The mother left her eight-year-old daughter with a couple of elderly ladies while the mother went on a ten-minute errand. And as the two old ladies and the little girl were sitting in the room together, one old lady said to the other, she's not very P-R-E-T-T-Y, is she? And the little girl says, no, but very S-M-A-R-T. How do you spell Rose? The teacher asked the little boy, and he said, B-R-O-S-E. The teacher says, there's no B in Rose. And the little boy says, there wasn't the one I smelled. Okie doke, folks. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and may his face shine upon you and give you peace. Deuteronomy. No, Numbers. That's in Numbers. God be with you till we meet again. Keep his loving arms around you. Flow his banner o'er or you. God be with you till we meet again. Jenny Palmer, 9.30 a.m., February 17, 2016, Anno Domini. Now, what is her number? It was in the auto dial, and now we've been auto dialing it so long we forgot our number. Jenny Palmer, Jesus is calling. Yeah, I just read it. <laughs> oh, good. Can and I just read it, finished all my scriptures. <laughs> oh, you finished all your scriptures? Yeah, i just been doing that. Every day for an hour. Yeah, yeah. Oh, as long as it takes, you know. <laughs> and
And you read them up? I have to stop in the middle and answer phone or something, but then I go back to it. So it's, it's you know, I just do it until it's done. And um, it, and it takes. It takes, and you read them out loud. Yeah, I read them out loud. Good. Are they getting into your soul? I hope so. I pray every day that they will get there and uh, do me so good. Yeah. Um, because they said the word says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So I'm hearing the read the word of God, even though I'm reading them to myself. But I'm hearing. It. <laughs> and it's help. Today, it's helping. Uh, it's helping other people, right? Those are two good ones. When you cling to old ways and sameness, you resist my work within you. I want you to embrace all that I am doing in your life, finding your security and me alone. It is easy to make an idol a routine, finding security within the boundaries you build around your life. Yes, they are. They're beautiful. Yeah. Okay. This is from Matthew 28, 5, 7. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. Just as he said, Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell this his disciples. He has risen from the dead. And it's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. And now I have told you. And then we got 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. Yeah, I like that. Huh? Anyone in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone. And the new has come. You're a new creation when you take Jesus as the Lord of your life. Because he's running things and now you're not, you know? And that's uh, Second Corinthians? Yep. Uh, 5.17. Thank you, Jenny. That was a beautiful one today, wasn't it? Oh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Yep. Every, yeah. every one. I never found one that wasn't beautiful. <laughs> well, I'm getting to go out to lunch with two of my sons today. I just found out the other one is going with us. Uh, now, who is Michael. that? Michael. John's in Florida. Michael and uh, Buddy? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's nice. Well, who, what's the name of the girl? The one that owns it. Uh, Tanya? Yeah. Oh, she was there for breakfast? She was there for a few minutes, and uh, she, she ran in and talked to my son, and then she told the, the waitress not to charge him. How nice. So I thought that was really nice that she treated him. Very nice. Now, yeah. I, had, I had three guests at the trolley line at lunchtime. You we left right at noon. 
You saw. I didn't know I was going. Right after I talked to you, buddy called and said, "I'm going to Brahma's tomorrow, and I want you to come with me." And I had already ate, so I didn't want to go with him. I had a toasted hard roll. Did you? Coffee. Did you see us? Okay, you want to know what we had? Oh, yeah. We had a hot tofurkey sandwich. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that would be bread and the tofurkey and gravy, mashed potatoes and real mashed potatoes and peas. Yeah. Well. There were four of us, and that was, yeah. that was $50. She uh, she was in charge of six subway sh shops. Yeah, well, she uh, had a, that, that time come, he knew her because he's quite the customer of the subway shop, you know. So uh, they had a long chat, and uh, it was good for Buddy, too, you know. And uh, I, I just went along with him. I had already ate, you know. I wasn't hungry. I had a hard roll anyway. Well, um, well, that's good. Yeah. And then we went down to the bank to my banker in uh, Kinderhook, and mm -hmm. we we had the durable power of attorney notarized. Mm -hmm. So you got everything all taken care of, right? All those papers are taken care of so far. Yeah. There's yeah. other there's other things to do. Oh, Jean has pneumonia. And they, they're treating her with an antibiotic and a nebulizer. And, um, the, you know, she's doing pretty good. Oh, thank you for the good news. Well, I called and found out about her because I wasn't going down there. And John, John called from Florida last night. They didn't get down there until they... Their plane was delayed because the plane that was taking them to Florida was coming in from Denver. <laughs> and it was delayed, so they thought they were going to get down there at 3, they got down there at 6. I'm <laughs> glad. They're there. Yeah, I'm glad of that, honey. Yeah, it's safe and sound. He called me last night. <laughs> now, when Madeline comes to work on Friday, I'm going to ask her to write a check for twenty dollars to Margaret Schillinger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I gave you all that information. Oh. Yeah. Well, whatever you let to do, you know. Sometimes God puts things on your heart, you do it, you know. Yes. Um, I always try to do what He tells me to do. Yep, that's your conscience, your Holy Spirit. Yeah. Oh, that's your spirit knocking on my door. That's inside of everybody. That. <laughs> that's that's inside of everybody, no matter how insensible they are. They still have the Holy Spirit inside of them. Yeah. Well, I don't know what to do. Yes, you do, and you succeed. Try to be obedient. You succeed. Well, I give it the best I, best I can, right? <laughs> you well, are. I gotta take a shower and get dressed, and we're going out with my two sons. All right. <laughs> you're That's a good day. When you get to see two of your kids, and go have lunch with them. Well, you're a very blessed woman to have all five children within a close distance instead of in California. All right, dear. Michael was gone so many years, but he's back now, so. Yep. And um, for so many years, he was one to uh, one missing, you know? Yep. But thank the good Lord, he's here now. Yep. yep. And, you know, he's got his daughter got married and got a grandson, and, and it's all been good. It's all good. Yes. So, have a blessed day. They all are blessed, Jenny, and you helped me to bless them. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jenny.
You want to see what the weather is, folks, from the computer? Can you see that? 33 degrees and cloudy. Thank you, Sarah Wilson. Thank you, Ginny Palmer. When you realize that the universe is one and that we're all together and that we're all running the universe and creating it and operating it, all of us, and that is what God is, the God inside of everybody, the God of life. When you realize that, what happens? The old is gone and the new has come. Sucking Corinthians 5.17, the old has gone and the new has come. Yep, all the bad things are going out of you folks and there's nothing but good in you. How's that? Yep, the old is gone and the new has come. And all the words of the hymn, now you really know what they mean. What's cooking? A bird's eye squash, bird's eye frozen squash in the oven at 350. The gravy is looking just right. This is made from George Washington broth with cornstarch. Uh, fry pets. Worthington Foods, fry pets, smell good. Peas and carrots. And this is for bread and gravy. And what's over here? Well, this is the makings of a green salad. You have green lettuce, green cucumbers, green bell peppers, and green avocado. Today? No, no, no. That would be too much. That's a whole meal in itself. And what is the spread you're using? Earth Balance. I don't know if it's good for you or not. You can really get along without it. Take our lives and let them be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take our hours and our days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. What happened to it? Where did it all go? Well, what are you going to do with? You've got about four more dinners here. Do you have four more guests? No. So what are you going to do with the four more dinners? I'm going to give them to the deer out in the woods through which the Valacia Kill runs. It's a lovely dinner for them. There's a bowl for the deer. I've, people said they have seen as many as five of them out there. And then what comes next? Wash the dishes. That's fun. The water's nice and hot, and you use olive, palm olive. What's this over here? That's more food for the deer. What's this? Vegetarian bologna. No, vegetarian chicken. Vegan. That's for dot com later tomorrow. Those crackers are for the deer also. And three, four cups of seeds. Four cups of seeds. Every day? Yes. 
every day all of these things crackers seeds and there's compost and then dot coms fertilizer goes into the woods and the litter turns into mud so it's all recycled thank you hot soapy water you made it so easy to wash the dishes and then they are all clean and drying on top of the stove getting heat from the oven leftover heat and that's it what does it take to do a dinner like that 230, 330, nine and a half. Clean sink. Why are you late this morning on God time? Well, I thought the telephone had enough charge in it. To set off the alarm. Telephone sets off an alarm. Yep, that's the way it goes these days. Your morning alarm is on the telephone. So it didn't go off. And the body didn't get wake up at five o'clock. So that's 25 minutes, and then Madeline brought the laundry back, all nice and folded, and it had to be put away in six different boxes or drawers. There's an acculeate wind this morning, folks. But it's pale blue, and I think it's going to be sunny. It's the third week of February, three and a half weeks left to spring. And we emptied the second bag of bird seed, 40 pounds. And this picture was on the bag. Aren't they wonderful? Their colors, and they fly, and they lay eggs and they reproduce, and they make more beautiful birds, and they hop, and they fly, and they sing, and they build nests. Aren't they wonderful? And feeding them is a joy. Heard a crow a couple of days ago, and about a year ago, a bald eagle flew over the backyard. God time. What are you going to write about? Seven twenty-five a.m. Joy book. God time. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take. My hours and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Can you translate that, folks? First of all, it isn't take my life, okay? We don't own it. It belongs to the universe. So take this life and let it be consecrated. Consecrated Lord to thee. Who is Lord to thee? The whole universe. All of us. The rocks, the trees, the skies, the seas. The animals, the plants, all other people. We're consecrated it to thee. Not to ourselves. We don't steal any part of it and run away and it for ourselves. Oh, we didn't set the timer. Time is so important to God. To 
the universe. Take this life and let it be consecrated to the universe. Take these hours. It's not your hours. It's not my hours. The hours belong to all of us. It's the allness and the wholeness and the greatness. Take these hours. Take these days and let them flow in ceaseless working for the universe, working for others. Those hymns are, those old, old hymns are all very, very accurate. If you can decipher them, you can understand what these things mean. Oh, if you get away from heaven and the pearly gates and the golden streets and the angels and the, the Spirit of God seems to be in us and that keeps us alive. But the Spirit of God is in these birds. And that Spirit of God sometimes is going to leave you. And where does it go? Tell me, where does that Spirit of God go? And leaves the body dead to recycle. The body recycles. And just as the body recycles into something else, the Spirit of God goes on somehow running the universe. And has, and has, and has, and has for billions of years. And is doing it now, and will do it in the future. I think the symbolism is good. I think it's the thought is behind that symbolism. Symbolism and that thought is accurate. And I think that's the way it is. If you can remember that it isn't yourself, that there isn't any self. Or you're smart if you can get rid of the self, if you can get rid of the ego, and live for the universe, live for the allness and the wholeness. I just found out that that durable power of attorney that I signed and before a notary, that's effective now, at the time I signed it. I thought it was effective after I lost my marbles, after I wasn't able to make any decisions. So I may revoke it. What do you think? Giving power of attorney over everything? Is that ego? <laughs> no, I don't think that's a good idea. So we might think about revoking it and also revoking it with a bank. Rescinding. What do you think we should do about that? Of course, it may not do, make any difference anyway, anyhow. And then what, this uh, durable power of attorney, when does it cease? When the person when the Spirit of God leaves a person and the body is dead? When does it cease? Oh, these are good questions to ask. Now, what's the word for today? A bet. A B E T. Advocate. Aid. Assist. Back, connive, countenance, agon, encourage, face, help, incite, instigate. Set on. Second. 
support, sustain, uphold, a bet. It's always a negative connotation, isn't it? It's not positive. It's something bad you do, isn't it? You got any jokes? Ugh. What did you do yesterday? Let's see if we got any. We went to the library yesterday. We spent $25 making 10 copies of the Durable Power of Attorney, the Health Proxy, the New, the Living Will. Uh, the arrangement with Albany Medical that this great body, which heals itself so well and has for 87 years, is going to Albany Medical College for the anatomy class. the jokes for the Folsom Bulletin for the fall issue. A woman's riding in a taxi cab and she says, Cabby, can you back this cab up a few miles? And she, he said, what for? She says, I don't have enough money to pay for it. And the little girl was looking at a nun all dressed in black and white. And the little girl says, why do you wear the same clothes every day? And the nun said, it's a habit. What happens when ducks fly upside down? That's right, they quack up. Take this life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. And you know what Lord to Thee is. Take these hours, take these days, and let them flow in ceaseless praise. What's ceaseless praise? Ceaseless praise is constantly reminding yourself that we are all one, we are all whole, we are all working together, we are creating this universe, all of us, all of us, years back, now and forever. Okay, well, excuse me, and in the future. And that it is everything that exists and that the Spirit of God is what is in us and that's our life, the difference between life and no life and that selflessness and no ego. That's what, take these hours, take these days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. That's what that means, right? Okie dokie. Thank you, God time. Thank you, little timer. Thank you all of the technology and all the electronics. This is German rye bread. It's very, very interesting. It's stiff and hard and dry. And it's almost pure rye and water. So it must be very, very good for you. And the taste is something you have to get used to and the hardness of it you have to get used to. But it's very, very interesting. And it's made in Germany. And this is hummus. You know what hummus is? That's chickpeas boiled the night before and the next morning mashed and flavored. When troubles roll by with the clouds in the sky when everything seems to go wrong, whatever my lot, 
Thou hast taught me to say it is well. It is well. With my soul. With my soul. It is well. It is well. With my soul. Sarah Young, Jesus is calling you. Hello, little kitty. Hello, beautiful girl. It's a sweet picture of you on the computer. You are so computergenic. You take a good picture on the computer. Yeah. You want some more? Vegan chicken with yeast on it. Jenny Palmer, Vincent, there's Jenny Palmer, she's 10. I'm ready for Sarah. Uh, you are. Hey, I have uh, something for you. You remember you left some quote pieces with uh, um, artists at Gavin Place? A long time ago, you left some material or something with artists? I did? He made, he made your uh, lap rug. My uh, goodness. Beautiful. My goodness. And, and uh, we prayed over it last night. Yes. And, um, I'm going to drop it off at your house on my way to the gathering place. Well, I have so many of you people to thank. Well, Artis did a beautiful job. Looks like springtime. Really? Yeah. Well, isn't she, wasn't she, wasn't she special and spectacular to do such a big job? Oh, she everybody does. That's sick, everybody that's sick in our church or, or going through something, she makes one for them. Even people outside of my church. Really? It's like a prayer shawl? She makes, um, she, uh, makes them even for my nephew down south. Oh, yes, I remember Junior, yes. Yeah, she makes them for everybody. She does a beautiful job. Oh, she artist, thank you. Ministry. Well, will you, uh... Will you give me her number and her name or her address or something when you come? Sure. Oh, okay. Thank you. Because I want to get back to her. And she, uh, she does a beautiful job. And uh, she brought it last night. So. Oh, that's lovely. Brought it to uh, the prayer meeting? Yeah, yeah. She's the one that gives me all the books I read. You know, she gives me a bag of books and then I read them. I give them back. <laughs> really? You read that many books? Oh yeah, I read a lot. I don't watch television or nothing, so at night I read, you know. Oh, isn't that educated? No wonder you're so smart. Oh, uh, so I read probably within a, you know, I probably read 20 books a month. <laughs> really? Oh, sure. And, and these are the kind of books that's got good things to read about. They, oh. They're Christian-oriented. I don't just read any. Christian.
Christian orientated, okay. Yeah. Good, that's what, yeah. Yeah, that, that's I, I, read, I read a lot, yeah. Yeah, that gives you the strength. Well, it uh, fills my life with, uh, with, you know, good things. Yeah. You, you are what you, you know, you, you believe you are what you eat. Well, I believe well, you are what you listen to and you read. And That's right. And, um, uh, oh, I don't want to watch things on television that I don't think will improve me. No, that'll... You know? Yeah. I, I, I got certain things I watch. I like the Antique Roadshow and different stuff like that. And and I, I got into the Antique Roadshow um, because of the Take my, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take these hours, take these days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Well, here we are, February the 18th. And this is Sarah Young. Yes. Jesus is calling you. Yeah, wait a second. Uh, yes, I am with you. Those four words, but I, yeah. yeah, but I'd like to add to that. We have to be with him. Yeah, we do. It's a choice. It's, it is a free choice. It's up to us. We've got to stay with him. We have to stay with him. We have to remember yeah. to stay with him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're, the Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. And he will rejoice over you with singing. Absolutely. Yeah. And the next one is Psalms. And yes, I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterwards you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire beside you. My flesh and my heart may fail. But God is, in, is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Jenny.
And well, thank you, and thank you, artist. How does artist spell her name? Okay, one moment. No, I gotta get the bulletin too. Hello, little kitty. You want something more to eat, right? How about getting off the pen? No, oh, never mind. Get another pen. There's a pen. Thank you, Tom. I'm ready. Okay. It's A R D Y C E. Oh, that's pretty. And, it, and her last name is A G A R. Thanks. And she lives at 12 Water Street. Uh huh. Get New York. Get New York. Yeah. Good call. One, one two zero oh, seven five. Got it. Got a telephone number. Three nine two. Three zero oh, zero oh, six. Thank you, Jenny. Think just a minute, Jenny. I'm leaving here at two o'clock to go to Bible study. All right, I go to the other place at noon. Oh, good. Then I'll meet with you here. Yeah. Okay. I'll, sometime around noon, I'll be there and uh, I'll bring you to Quilt. You're good to do that. And what time do you leave the gathering place? Seven tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that service. Thank you for making it a blessed day. <laughs> well, every day we got left now, now age is a blessed day, right? 
Okay, Jenny. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. And I always thank Franklin. I always thank you, Franklin, for the day. Okay. Why do you like to have your head stroked? Why does that feel so good? I'm happy to do it for you because you like it so much. So that's 9.35 a.m. And in order to proceed with putting expenses into the book and doing the word a bet and doing the think folder, in order to get you off of the top of all that, I will have to feed you. Over here, honey. Over here. Come here, kitty. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Come on, kitty. Come on. We'll put some yeast on it. Yeast. Nutrition yeast. Going to come over, kitty? Nutrition yeast. This isn't going to work, folks. So what do we do now? It's called finger feeding. Going to sit up and eat, kitty? How about sitting up and eating and getting off the joy book? Oh, thank you, kitty. Oh, thank you very, very much. <laughs> You're not going to eat it? Oh, you want something different? Here's another vegetarian cold cut. Let's try this in a tiny bit. See if you go for that. Here, try this one. Vegetarian cold cut. Oh, you like that better. Oh, goody. Let me put some yeast on it. There you go. Okie doke, folks. And then we have to exercise the body, do the calisthenics, go up on the porch and do the good deeds, like pick up any litter. Make sure the dumpster is is in good order, and make sure the recycle tubs are in good order, and pick up the end mail, and then telephone twenty people, and then do the details, the operations that came down from above, the assignments that came from above. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what grief we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry Everything to God in prayer.
we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have. just given us and great thanksgiving the Lord be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Our God, it is right to give our thanks and praise. Sanctus. <laughs> Chef Richard Mooney on February eighteen. <laughs> the best baker of pro carried about with even wind and doctrine by the slightest of man. Express the truth with his neighbor, for we are all parts of one body and member of another. When angry, do not sin. Do not ever let your wrath, your expiration, your fury, for your indentation lasts until the sun goes down. Leave no such room or foothold for the devil. Give no opportunity to him. Let the thief steal no more, but rather let him be industrious, making all honest living with his own hands so that he may be able to give to those in need. Let no fool and polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth, for only such speech as is good, beneficial, to the spiritual progress of others, as is fitting to the need and the occasion that it may be a blessing and give graces God favor to those who hear it. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do not offer or vex or sadden him by whom you were sealed, marked, branded as God's own, secured for the day of redemption, of final delusion, through Christ from evil and consequences of sin. Let all bitterness and indignation and wrath, passion, rage, bad temper, and resentment, anger, animosity, and fall, furling, brawling, clamor, condemnation, and slander, evil speaking, abusive or blasphemous language, be baptized from you with all malice, spite, ill, or baseness of any kind and become useful and helpful and kind to one another, tender-hearted, compassionate, understanding, loving, hearted, forgiving one another, readily and freely, 
as God and Christ forgave you. Amen. Amen. That was, to me... That's beautiful. That was all about God's teaching of what man should not do. Yes. And do his work. Yes. I'm a sinner. I confess. I have sinned. I am sorry. I want to make good. They're not too late, are they? Three no. weeks. I gotta get. I <laughs> In our makeup here, we're the Trinity, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Think about it. Okay, all right, let's let's go over to four. Four was really uh, our goal, which is true. Okay, chapter summary. Paul now urges attitudes which express love and maintain unity. He reminds the Epithenians of all that binds Christianities together, and this unity is essential for the God has provided his church with the gifted person uh, who are to equip. Good morning, folks. It's God time. I have something astonishing to show you. Artists, artists made this stitching. Look at it, folks. Can you imagine that? The stitching is a thrill. How can anybody do that? Look at it. And see the back, how well done it is. More grand creativity in the universe. Thank you, artists. And it's a prayer quilt. It, of course, is done with prayer. And she goes to the new hope for life church here in Nassau Village. God is great for stitching. Perfectly executed.
Ardis. A R D Y C E. Thank you for the prayers. It was the prayers that helped the body heal itself, wasn't it? With no doctors and with no medicine. This is God time on the 19th of February, the third week of February. Let's uh, go to the telephone and see if it would tell us the temperature. I think it will, after a while. Well, I guess I don't know how to do it. Here it comes, folks. 11 degrees and sunny. And the dear grand earth is spinning around. And our back is no longer to the sun. It's spinning around at 600 miles per second, uh, hour. How come we don't feel that? Now this was an amazing thing. This was a little clementine. And you can see its little green stem that was once a flower. It was once a bud, once a flower, and then that miracle of birth that miracle of life, and now a fruit. I lost my cold yesterday. I think that's a sin. I was abashed. I lost my self-possession. I went to our Nassau Free Library, and I waited for one customer to be waited on. I waited for another customer to be waited on. And then it was my turn. Uh, what do you want? I would like you to go to the teaching company, to great courses, and I would like to have you go to science. And I would like to have you make a list, make a copy of a list of what they have for DVDs in science for the Upper Hudson Library System, Interloan. Oh, well, we're very busy. Can you wait or can you come back? Uh, I don't think that's right. Libraries don't do that. And then somebody else started working on it. And instead of doing the simple job of finding the list of DVDs in the subject of science, that the Upper Hudson Library has, instead of just going ahead and doing that and making me a copy so I could check off the ones to order, I just heard one resistance after another, one excuse after another, one procrastination after another. And then I just said, bye. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Then I had to go to Bible study but when I got home from Bible study, I called the East Greenbush Library. And they said immediately that if I came in, they would make me a list of the DVDs that, in science, 
on the subject science that the Upper Hudson Library has. And then I can order them. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'll do better. What does a bash mean? It means to lose the self-possession. It means to mortify, to shame, to humiliate. Sorry. Trying to correct it. With what? Oh, for a thousand words to write. Our universe to praise. Our great universe. The triumph of its grace. Oh, for a thousand words to write. Our universe to praise. Our great universe, the triumph of its grace. That's where I should have been. So, what do we do now? It's God time. So we'll start over again. And be alert and vigilant that such a self-possession is not lost again. Ephesians chapter 3 and 4, very nice to read, very nice things to do. And remember that we're not working against each other, we're working with each other and for each other. And we're in it together. Remember that, remember that, not you but myself. What else happened yesterday? Dot com had catnip. The ground is bare. Uh, the temperature is mild. don't see any heavenly bodies and you don't didn't see any earthly bodies this morning and I found out that the power of attorney the durable power of attorney indeed lets anyone do anything they want with anything you have and I don't understand its purpose do you I thought it kicked in only when the person became disabled, but that's wrong. That's not so. It kicks in them from the minute you sign it and it's notarized. So I think we should rescind it. But what's, what purpose does it serve? What does it accomplish? Who needs that? If you're of sound body and sound mind, who needs that? Okay, you're probably smarter than I am, and you can figure it out. Oh, for a thousand words to sing, our universe to praise, our great universe, the triumph of its grace. Hey folks, it's Sarah, young time, and I want to mention this pizza to you. Uh, this is a no cheese pizza uh, made with organic. Mushrooms, sweet onions, and roasted red peppers, and I'm telling you, it's delicious. 
and it's a real better flavor than the other pizza and so much better for you and doesn't clog up your arteries with that gooey cheese. Bad stuff. Damies. Uh, no cheese pizza. I was going to show you voice command where you ask it to dial the number for you. And it does. And the line is busy. Clear all. What's that all about? Clear all. That's hair color, isn't it? Minutes to 11, five, on the 22nd of January. I left a message with you. You need to get in touch with Queen's Public Television because they said that no, the voice come in. And that if the bump is not rectified by March the 10th, your slot will be forfeited. Here it is. 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 Voice command. Message erased. Next message. Hi, Quindor, it's Linda. I started to use just in case you could remember my number. Here it is. Say a command. Say a command. Ginny Palmer. Message erased. Did you say call Ginny Palmer Mobile? Yes. Listen to your message. Press 1. Okay, keep going. Calling Ginny Palmer Mobile. Press two. You have no messages whose retention time is about to expire. To listen to your messages, press one. Busy line. To listen to your voice message, okay. press two. First, save voice message. Try later. Now you have to go make sure you clear all. Clear all. Okay. What's next? Exercise the body. Do the calisthenics. Appreciate the motion of the body. Appreciate God's motion. So many people don't have a motion of the body. And then go upstairs on the porch and do good deeds. What good deeds? Pick up any litter. Make sure the dumpster's neat and tidy. Make sure the recycled tubs are neat and tidy. Pick up the end mail. And what's going on over here on the TV screen? Uh, making a DVD from an SD of all of the in calls that came in from December 29th through February 18th. Why? I don't know, it's an interesting record. Telephoning and it's down to about 15 calls. And then the details, the operations. 
then Madeline and all the secretary work. Now, how, how would you summarize that for the day? Well, I, I think he, he was just telling to bring all his problems to him and, and to, to know that he is all-powerful in glory. You know, sometimes we, we want to bring Jesus down to our level, God down to our level, instead of us going up to his level. You know, but we got to think of what a supreme being he is. Well, uh, let me ask you something. If you're a Christian and if you love Jesus and you do good and all the time, you don't have problems, do you? Well, I, I think a lot of people do. A lot of times she speaks a lot on problems that I don't seem to have. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and, but, you know, it might be somebody else that has it and we could share with them that, you know, they believe they, they, they need to bring it to the higher power to Jesus, you know? Yes. So I think this is a learning thing, too. It's not just for us. Oh, okay. It's for other people, you know? Okay, to help other people with. Yeah, that's the way I feel about it. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. Or my. <laughs> yeah, okay, uh-huh. and it, the scripture is that God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. And that's from Exodus. You know, she's not going to hit it right on you every day. She hit you good the other day, though. Remember the day she said about sometimes you, when you're not feeling good, that's because you spend more time with the, with the, the Lord. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. So I think you grew really close to him while you were not feeling good. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. So I don't know. It, you know, she's only a human. She's led by the Spirit, so... Uh-huh. And then we got Habakkuk. I guess that's the way you pronounce it. So the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vine. So the olive crop fails and the field produce no food. Though so there is no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stall, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign God, Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of um, fear. He enables me to go on the height. And you know what? Bad things do happen to good people. You know that, don't you? Yes. Bad things do happen to good people. It, uh, it, some, and sometimes, you know, I think when you first become a Christian and, and you think everything is going to be wonderful, I think it's a time, it's a testing time there when everything seems to go wrong. Oh, you think so? Yeah. And, and then, you know, you just have to keep the faith. It's, it's like a... It's like a test, you know. They say God don't test anybody, but He allows certain things in our lives to strengthen us and build up our faith, you know. Oh, I see. Okay. So that's the way I feel about it because well, that's... I, you know, I've been a Christian for many years, but that don't mean I don't have problems. Okay. I do. I do, I do have problems. I have, you know, I have family things that uh, that comes up that's very distressing to me. Yeah. Not in my own self, really, um, not, you know, my own life. It's the life of people around me. Yeah, okay. That is okay. You know, uh, I, you know, I feel that, you know, he supplies all my needs, and uh, he's my healer, and, and uh, I rely on him for all my resources, and, so I don't have a lot of problem there, but when problems come to people I love, then that's a problem. Yes. Yeah. So I think that that's what this is all about, you know. When the people that you're very close to, like my children, you know, I got a son that's going through a very hard time. And, you know, that, that does, you know, affect my, the way I think and feel, you know. 
Yes, indeed. It does. You know, when, when my kids hurt, I hurt. Yes, of course. And, and the Bible says, too, when, when we live in the Spirit and the other people that, you know, they hurt, we hurt, you know? Yes. Like we hurt for Marge and we hurt for Jean and, and uh, so there is hurt, you know? Yeah. Yes. And it's not a personal life may not be hurt. That's what I say, you know, my personal life is is okay, you know? Yes. It's okay. Um, you know, I, I was thinking the other day, it's a strange thought. You know how I, I have to bring in all the wood, you know? <laughs> yes. And, and another thing is I don't drink my water because we have a natural runoff across my property and it seeped into my well and I don't drink my water. I have to bring it in. Oh. So, you know, what I was thinking of that scripture the other day, you have not because you asked not. And you know what? I have never petitioned the Lord for anything other than my wood. And I've never asked him to ever fix my water. Oh. So, you know, the Bible says you have not because you asked not. So, I've been thinking about that. I see. Uh-huh. But, uh, you know, I've been happy with the way it is, you know. I got wood, I got heat. Uh, you know, the water's a little inconvenient, but it's, it's, some, it's not bad, you know. I'm not complaining about it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But that is funny how that scripture jumped out at me the other day. Oh, yeah. You have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask the miss, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. So what do you think about that? <laughs> I don't know. What are you going to do about that? Do you know I yet? I don't know. I haven't decided. <laughs> yeah, you, have, you haven't heard from up above yet. No, I haven't got my marching orders yet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're the Lord's army, you know? Yes. <laughs> I, haven't, uh, I haven't got my marching orders yet, so <laughs> it, it just popped up, you know? Yeah. I never thought about it before. Strength and wisdom to bring in the wood, you know. Yes. I ask him for his strength. I ask him that every time I do it, but I've never asked him to change the situation. Because no. I guess I'm okay with it. <laughs> yes. Right. No, you know what? I don't know. Did you get the uh, results on the uh, biopsy? Not yet. No. Mm-hmm. Now. Yes, uh-huh. If, if he don't let me know anything this weekend, maybe I'll call him one day and see what he says. Yes, good idea. If you go to see Gene Miller, I'd like to go to the East Greenbush Library. Yeah, I don't know exactly when that's going to be, though. I, I really got to get down to see March. Oh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. Maybe one day next week we'll, we'll decide I'll take you to the library. Uh, artist says that Marge's going to be there at least a month. Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what, uh, Diane told me. Uh, she, they won't let her out until she can use her arm for a walker. Yeah, both arms are bad. So she can't use both arms for a walker, they can't let her out. No. No. Well, we wish her the best. Okay. You have a blessed day. Yes, you too, Jeannie. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And she's 80 years old. <laughs> wow. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they who seek... Who seek what? Something in righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth.
inherit the earth, no. <laughs> inherit the earth, the galaxy, and all the universe. Oh, I guess that's what the earth means. Yes, blessed are they. I told you about this pizza, didn't I? Amy's no cheese pizza. Made with organic mushrooms, sweet onions, and roasted red peppers. It is succulent. It is delectable. And no gooey stuff filling up your arteries. Blessed are the meek, and they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be fulfilled. Hunger and thirst after righteousness for the animals. Isn't that nice? Way down in the backyard where nobody sees it but the neighbors. Thank you, Edna. Very cheerful. 37 degrees and cloudy. $75 worth of products from the vegan store in Maryland. Peanut butter. Dog treats. Peanut butter, cinnamon dog treats. A cookie. Uh, a dog treat. Vegan. Uh, another cookie. Vegan jelly beans. Vegan cat supplement. Another cookie. Ginger snaps. Peanut butter pops. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, our great universe praise. The greatness of our universe, the triumph of its ways. Isn't that right, folks? It's February 20th, and it's one month to the vernal equinox. That's a 200 watt bulb. And we are getting through the winter, our hibernation. Isn't it nice, warm and cozy? Bear, the ground is bare, no snow around anywhere. And it's been that way for Oh, six days. Temperature is 37 degrees and cloudy. And somebody dumped pallets, five pallets on our property. Where did they come from? Who did it? The owner didn't do it. 
So Madeline says she can use pallets underneath her wood pile. And Dotcom likes stakelets. It's a product either by Loma Linda or Worthington Foods. It doesn't make any difference. They're owned by Kellogg's. And I think it's gluten. And she likes them. She ate one and a half this morning. I read her the menu. I read her the breakfast menu. She can have cream of mushroom soup. Uh, she can have steaklets. She can have bologna, vegan bologna. Or she can have vegan chicken. And she likes gravy. Now, this is God time. At what? 10 after 7, Auntie Meridium. I'd like to talk some things over with you. Call me and I'll talk things over with you. The out mail yesterday. A uh, hundred and three dollars national grid heating. Not bad, right? For February. Not bad at all. A couple of years ago it went way up to 250. I don't know what happened. They overcharged and they got caught, I guess. And twenty dollars to Mark Schillinger who fell and cut her eye, and the eye had to be removed. Dear Marge, healing, 100% health, ability, capacity, aptitude, caliber, capability, 100% Marge Schillinger. And we sent her a gift of $20. That will help heal, right? And then what else? Just a second, folks. They're out here in the out mail, and they've got to be mailed by 9 o'clock. I think it's so wonderful that the post office picks up your mail for you. They bring you your mail, and then they pick up the out mail. I think the post office is a grand institution. I love it. I praise it. I thank the government for it. And I thank all you postal workers for it. Oh, yes. And uh, Cablevision, Bergen County, the uh, DIS, four shows went to them for Newark. And Morris. And they were returned. That means it's a dead office. So Cecilia, who is really a crackerjack, she's really good. She's one of the best public access administrators that I know, public access administrators I know. So she said to send it to her in Newark, that her office is open on Central Avenue in Newark all the time. And our post office, Nassau, charges too much. They don't know how to read the computer. They charge double. Two dollars and forty cents when it could go out for a dollar and twenty cents. So we know a post office that does it right. And Jill Andros is having her 60th birthday. She's rented space at the VFW, the Veterans of Foreign Wars. And she is celebrating 15 years as a survivor of breast cancer. So we're asked to come to her birthday party and bring a, a dish. And I will bring four vegan, no cheese, Amy's pizzas. Delicious. And you can have a free vegetarian starter guide. 
a free vegetarian starter guide. We called artists who made that beautiful prayer quilt and prayed all the time she made it and passed the prayers on to us. That beautiful quilt I showed you yesterday and we thanked her and had a good conversation with her. In calls. I record all in calls that come in on the recorder. Some of them are interesting and some of them are very dull. But anyway, it was three hours of them. From December 29, 2015 to February 18, 2016. All the conversations, you know, there's about 20 calls made every day. They all should be recorded because people are very, very interesting in their conversations. Would you realize how many hours that would be? And who's ever going to be able to assimilate or introcept this information? There's so much information. Hours and hours of DVDs. The vegan store we ordered about $75 of vegan products. Vegan dishwater, a dishwasher, fluid, uh, vegan laundry detergent. Uh, that means that it isn't tested on animals and things like that. No animal products. A vegan jelly beans. Here is a whistle that you can put on the bumper of your car and the deer hears your car coming and runs out of the road instead of into the road, we hope. I'll give that to my neighbor next door who killed a deer right up here on front of the, on top of the hill and his brother also and enough of the car killed a deer. So I'll give it to my neighbor next door. A beautiful animal. What a beautiful animal. What a great creation. Who does the creating? Who does the operating of this grand universe? All of us. All of us. All of us millions and billions of years ago, all of us now and all of us into the future. Who does it? That's what God is. God is the spirit inside of us. The spirit inside of us leaves us and what happens to the body? It recycles. What happens is the Spirit of God when it leaves you? It goes off into the universe. Joins all of us. Creates and operates. Oh, for a thousand words to write. Our universe is praise. The greatness of our universe, the triumph of its grace. Veterinarians, my friend is already paying off a thousand dollars and they let her pay it off three hundred dollars a month. And then another cat gets sick. And the money she was saving to repair her car had to go to the veterinarian. 100 dollars $150, $200. Then another cat gets sick. And she saves his life. He cannot urinate. He would have been dead. So she goes to the veterinarian again. Guess what that bill was yesterday? $1,200. Veterinarians, I object. I object, veterinarians. I object for your making money off of sick cats and dogs. I object to it. That's avarice, out and out avarice. Jesus healed. Did he charge? No. I oppose this veterinarian avarice. 
and I've seen it happening for years and years, turning sick animals into an industry, I oppose it. And you should be ashamed of yourselves. And there's two conclaves of these money-making veterinarians very near us, and maybe more. But these I have first-hand knowledge of. I oppose it. Listen to your conscience. Avarice. Where's your kindness and your goodness and your oneness and your allness and your wholeness? Where is it? That's out and out ego. Out and out sin. Doke. Jokes. I'll tell you again about the little girl who asked the nun, why do you wear the same clothes every day and they're always black and white? And what did the nun say? It's a habit. And what happens to ducks when they fly upside down? They quack up. And the Chinese telephone book isn't going to be published any longer. There's so many wings and so many wongs. People are winging the wong number. The IRS that stands for Infernal Revenue Service, and you know it's not a law. The whole thing of your paying income tax is illegal. It's not a law. It was only ratified by two states, and it takes many more states than that. But it's been propagandized for so long, people just do it. And they have the guns, and they have the keys to the prison. But it is not a law. The policeman, very good looking young policeman, stopped a very good looking young lady. And he says, your license says that you should be wearing contacts. And she, oh excuse me, your license says that you should be wearing glasses. And she said, well I have contacts. And he says, I don't care who you know. This uh, minister very graciously would go to the prison every month and give a lecture, free lecture, to the prisoners. And after a while, the prisoners went to the warden and said, Warden, we protest these lectures. They were not part of our sentences. Okay. The Beatitudes. Matthew 5, the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus Christ, Jesus the Anointed One, Jesus the Christ. This is Lent, 40 days of holy living, 40 days of repenting and making good, and 40 days of praying and worshiping and meditating and finding the truth of life. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Who are the poor in spirit? As best I can figure, the poor in spirit are those who want to make it with God and they can't do it. They struggle and struggle and struggle. What do you say? Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. You mourn the loss of a loved one, of a loved animal. Somehow you shall be comforted. The Spirit of God has left that loved one. Go look for the Spirit of God that left it. Good idea. Not bad. 
The Spirit of God has left that loved one. That's what life is. It's the Spirit of God in you. And when it leaves, the body what? Recycles. Go search for that Spirit of God that left the loved one. And you will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Do you want to inherit the earth? What does that mean? It means you be realize your oneness with not only the earth, but the galaxy, the cluster of galaxies, the universe. That's when you inherit the earth and you realize that you're one with everybody else and you're working hand in hand and you're running the universe, you're creating it with all of us together and years past, present and years into the future. That's when you inherit the earth. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, my poor friend trying to help these stray animals and being ripped off. A racket by these veterinarians come trying to come up to the money with the money. Her friend let her put it on her credit card. Twelve hundred dollars veterinarian bill with three hundred dollars a month for the next two months to pay already. With true three hundred dollars that went out in cash this week. Where's the money come from? Uh, the Glendora Vegetarian Club gave her a hundred dollars yesterday to start it. She had a hundred dollars that she was saving up for car repairs. Today we'll think about it more and see if we can come up with more money. A racket, a ripoff, avariciousness, or avarice. The word for today, folks, is a beautiful one. It's in the think folder, and it is abide. And it means to await expectantly, and it means to bear patiently. And it means to continue in a place for a while, to dwell, to remain fixed or stable. It means to face or sojourn or stand the consequences of. You're going to have to do that, veterinarians. You're going to have to stand the consequences of your greed. And I asked her, my friend, is a cat better? Well, the cat's fly, but not better. Not well. After $1,200. It means to stay. To abide is to stay. To submit without shrinking. Submit without shrinking. To suffer for. To tolerate. To wait for. Abide with me. Fast falls the evening tide. The darkness deepens. Lord with us abide when other helpers fail and comforts flee help of the helpless Lord 
abide with them. That's when the Spirit of God leaves the body. But again, try to follow that Spirit of God. Try to find it. Try to stay with it. And you will be comforted. We didn't finish the Beatitudes. I don't know if I can find them. Well, can you do them from memory? Yeah, one is, uh, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. And then there's another one. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall see God, or something like that. Okay. Um, I guess it's just one more topic. Drinking eight glasses of water a day. Years ago, the Seventh-day Adventists, who are great health advocates, because after all, the body is the temple of God, right? It is The Spirit of God is inside you, that's what it means. The body is the temple of God. So you take good care of the body so that the spirit will be in good shape. They used to say eight glasses of water today, and I used to think that was utterly impossible. But now, ten years later, I think it's a good idea, and I've been able to do it. This great big cup is two glasses, two eight ounces. Try to drink a glass every hour. What is a glass? It's half a glass is 12 straw slurps. slurps. So, 24 slurps is a glass. And my friend tried to do it with me. Oh, and then the Seventh-day Adventists now say that it's only five glasses a day. <clears throat> so my friend and my neighbor was trying to do it, and she couldn't make it. But five glasses is the done deal now. New Year's resolution, saintly eating, agape eating, which is a salad, a green salad, green lettuce, green cucumber, green bell pepper, and green avocado. Uh, fresh fruit, which is an orange, an apple, a banana, and grapes. Uh, hot cereal, which is malto meal. I finished a box. It cost $4. It's lasted for three months. One box of Keller's cornflakes uh, corn costs more than that and lasts how long? So do not buy that processed morning cereal. Do not buy it. Cheerios and loops and fruit loops and all that stuff. You buy a hot cereal and you cook it and it only takes five minutes. And it's delicious and your body says thanks. Your body says that's what I was looking for, nutrition. So you, I don't know about cream of wheat, it's white. I don't know about oatmeal, it's gooey. Uh, I don't know about uh, Maltex. That's a very good one, Maltex. What about maple? Anyway, you buy wheat, you buy unprocessed, other, you know, gooey process, colored added and all that junk. And so that's the third thing you eat. The fourth thing is a peanut butter sandwich and orange juice. The fifth thing is a nut fruit shake, which is pineapple juice, oats, 
uh, cashews, and a banana. And the last thing is eat five spoonfuls of granola. That's agape eating. That's vegan eating. That's about as raw as you can get, isn't it? God time. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to hear your God time. I would like to hear what's on your mind. And I would like to hear what you're trying to do. And I would like to help you if I can. Okay. Lent 2016, February 20. Okay, let's see what Jeannie Palmer is doing. And we know what Sarah is doing, you know. Here's this German rye bread I told you about. It really is. You do kind of get to like it. Look at that, it's solid rye. I really kind of like it. Where do you suppose you can find it now? Okay. Jesus is calling. Oh, he did such a grand job in the museum. Column 44 has disappeared. We put it into the empties from column 9 to column 15. And column 43 has disappeared. And next Friday, Madeline and I will try to consolidate column 42 and 41 into the empties. And then two weeks from now, we'll do column 40 to 39, and that's the end. We've done all the columns up from 1 to 38, and we have scrutinized them. No mice. Cleaned everything out. If the boxes were ready to be retired, then we put in Debbie Holden's beautiful W.B. Mason boxes. Okay. I like this LG telephone. If you work it just right, when you charge it, a picture of a battery will come up and then it will say 100%. And that's what you and I are, aren't we? Well, we're trying to be 100%, right? You and I and all of our friends in the universe, up above and below and down there and over here and up there. Oh, wait, I didn't get that rubber ball. Put that on the errands list. The rubber ball of elastics. You know, it shows you all the elastics going in a sphere already weighed, and that's the way things go with the electromagnetic waves in the universe, or in the hearth, earth. Okay. Let me go to telephone. And we go to contacts. There's Ginny Palmer. It's sunny. It's above 40 degrees. On February. Hello, Hello Ginny Palmer. Jesus is calling us. Yeah, you're late today. Oh, I beg your pardon. Am I too late? 
But let me tell you about that salad. I don't know where I have ever had a better salad. Well, you mean I know how to make salad? <laughs> no, I'm saying I don't know when I have ever had a better salad. I think it is the best salad I've ever had. I couldn't Thank you. I couldn't count all the things you had in it. You had a, a green and you had some orange uh, slices and you had some red things they were cranberries. Yeah. And you had walnut and yeah. and uh, then I think I saw cucumber. Yeah. Oh that was such a good salad, Ginny. And green peppers. Oh and green peppers. Yeah. Oh. I Oh, yeah, I see. <laughs> I, I make whatever is in the house. I, uh, I do, you know? That's, that's an enthusiasm salad. You put everything you have into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jenny, well, I want to I wanna tell you about a recipe I have for a salad. I call it a green salad. It's green lettuce, green cucumber, green bell pepper, and green avocado. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. have to have cheesecake, huh? Oh no, cheesecake is a dessert. Oh, oh good, if well then I'll take... They got, a, they got a huge menu. Then I'll take you to the cheesecake factory and we'll, <laughs> and we'll have that, do they call it a wrap? Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a, a you know, like a <coughs> tiny day roll? Yes. Is too late for you. You like one thirty or one? Monday. Yeah, Does Monday. The, Monday. No, the twenty eighth. This well, next, next the twenty eighth. Let's see. Yeah, the twenty first is next this coming Monday. The twenty eighth. It's a week after that. Well, the twenty eighth is Sunday. Oh, okay. Then the twenty ninth. The twenty ninth is a Are you day. Are you sure? And that's on a Monday? And that's a Monday. Oh my gosh, I've done everything wrong then. Yeah, they, uh, yeah. And the first? The calendar. Sunday, the, Sunday is, uh, next, next Sunday is the 28th. And the and Monday, the leap year, is the 29th, Jenny? Yep, the 29th of February. Oh, all right. Do you, do you want to go the last Monday of the month? I imagine it is, but I think I can go for it, honey. On the 20, what time do you want to go? 1 o'clock or 1? Well, you might have to wait to get in, but cause we, we went at noon the other day and walked right in. There's always a waiting line there. That place is busy. Okay, at uh, what time do you want to go? 1.30? Yeah, anytime. Yeah, okay. Okay, it's a date. And, and if the weather is bad. Well. One thirty p.m. the 29th. Do you really want to do it? Yeah, you know, we can do it, yeah. Uh, it just, uh, as I said, if the weather's bad, I'm not going to do it. Oh, okay. that, oh that, that's always a condition. You don't have yeah, to do that. Yeah, and also if no. you, and also if you break your neck, and also if you run out of wood, and also, so those are all conditions. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't like, I don't like to promise people they did not do it. No, you know? no, we but all understand. 
No, I don't, I don't care to go out in any kind of bad weather. And today yeah. it's over 40 degrees, and the rain has gone to sunshine. And it's going to be 50 degrees. Wow. On February 21st. I just talked to John in Florida. He yeah. said it's going to be in the high 70s today. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather be here. Okay, go ahead. Okay. All right. Uh, February the 20th, right? Yes. It's, it says, learn to live from your, tree, your true center in me. Wait a second. True center in me. All yeah. right. I like it. I like it. I'll put it down. The true center. Yep. I reside in the deepest depth of your being. Oh, I like that. Deepest depth. Yeah. Got it. it yeah, in eternal union. Oh, eternal your, union. In eternal union with your spirit. Oh, oh, that's wonderful. Eternal union. With your spirit. With your spirit. That I what? At, at this deep level, my peace reigns continuously. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You will not find lasting peace in the world around you in circumstances or in human relationship. Wait, wait, I want to get that. You will not find peace. Lasting peace in the world around you in circumstances or in human relationship. Blessed peace in the world yeah. around you yeah. or or in circumstances? Yeah, yeah, in our human relationships. Which is next after around you? That's what's circumstances. Or in circumstances. That's good. Hold still. Or in circumstances or in human relationships. Excellent. Okay. The external world is always in flux. Under the curse of death and decay. But there is a gold mine of peace deep within you waiting to be tapped. Wait a second. The external world is in is always in flux is always in flux under the curse of death and decay under curse of death and decay and decay but a gold mine of peace is deep within you peace deep is within you Take time. Yeah. Take time to what? B E L V E. Believe into the riches of my residing presence. That means just take time to, to dwell in Him. Oh, yeah, that's the secret. I want you to live increasingly from your real center where my love has an eternal grip on you. I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. Live continually in your deepest center? Yeah. Okay. Well, he said to live, the, the first part of this said live into you. Your true center is in, in Christ. In your true center. Yeah. Lovely. That's the hope of glory. Boy, that's the best one yet, I think. Colossians what? 315. Thanks. Okay. And the next one is Colossians 2, 127. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Glorious riches. Wow. Uh, that's to Colossians 2, what? 
127? Yeah, that was the second one. The first one was... 127 three. verses? Oh. Cha one chapter, 27. I got it. Okay? Yep. Thank you very much. Yep, some days it's really good, right? Oh, this is probably the best one I ever heard. Yeah. Now, uh, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. That's the one that Baptist used for an altar call. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I went up there three times with that song. <laughs> three times and it didn't happen. It didn't happen until 30 years later, right? <laughs> it took a while. It took a while. Well, uh, I think it took a while for me, you know. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's God's time, honey. Yes, it is. Yeah, well, at least I finally... Did, I you hear, did you hear from the doctor? No, not yet, no. Didn't hear I from her. No. We sent $20 to Mark Schillinger today. Did you? Yep. Yeah. Now here's an awful thing. My friend helps cats, sick cats, and adopts them and helps them. And she had this one cat who had his bladder was plugged and he would have died. And she took him to the veterinarian in Chatham. Do you and, and, he, and the veterinarian charged him twelve hundred dollars. Oh yeah. And she's a poor, 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 poor person. Wonderful. And um, she could have called them. Called who? This this organization. I uh, I don't know all the information, but both of them. And I know my sister had a when she was alive and she lived in the trailer park. We had this cat that looked like skin and bones, and she was trying to feed it. And Jesse came and got it, and and put it in a cat carrier and carried it into that place where they keep these cats. Okay, will you get the information for me? And she, um, my, my granddaughter keeps cats uh, until they get adopted sometime. Will you get the information for me? Yeah, I will. Oh, good, thank you. Okay, so how is she going to pay that? She's already, uh, last month she had a veterinarian bill of $1,000, and they let her pay it in $300 installments. So, and then... Then in between that and these two that I told you, she had other veterinarians bill. This little kitty was hit by a car and is paralyzed, and she has to help the kitty urinate. And she's got a bill on that of $200, and that took all the cash that she earned here. Well, you know what? You can only do what you can do. So, and then her friend, Joyce, was kind enough to put this $1,200 bill on her credit card. And then I gave her yesterday $100. And I'm going to try to give her 100 Wednesday. And uh, I'm just, I'm going to look at it every day to see what I can do. Well, you can't run up bills you can't pay. What, dear? It's, you shouldn't run up bills you can't pay, you know? Oh, that's true. But the choice is that the animal dies. Yes. So that's why I don't have an animal? Yes, that's a good reason. Now, I, will, you will get that information for me? Yeah, I will. Okay. Now, they don't, sometimes they're full. They can only take what they can take. But I know Jesse came and got this cat, and, um, and took it there, and, and this cat needed all kinds of surgery. Wow. It, it, they, uh, they called him Orange, and uh, he had his own website. Because he wasn't adoptable, and um, he had people send him. He had one man that come in and brought him chicken all the time. 
Poor chicken. He, he lived a good life. He had his own website. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you see, are the turkeys okay this year? Yeah, so are they okay this year? Yeah, yeah. Do, do you need another bag of uh, corn? Well, she used all of it, but I, I don't know if she wants another bag or not. You need to, I'll ask her. Okay, you ask her if she needs another bag of corn. Yeah, I'll ask her if she needs another bag of corn. Okay, I'll ask her if she needs another bag of corn. Okay, you ask her if she needs another bag of corn. Okay, you ask her if she needs another bag and then we'll drop it off if she does, and we won't put it on the antique car. <laughs> well, you know what? I think, I think she's bringing it right around the corner. Okay, well, just settle that for me. If she wants another bag, I'll get it for her. It's no. not like last year when they couldn't get nothing, you know? Yeah, so find out for sure, and if she needs it, I'll get another bag. Yeah, don't, don't give it to her if she says okay, okay? Yes, I'm waiting for you to tell me. All righty. Have a good day. Yeah, did I tell you about the uh, the nun and the little girl? Yeah. Okay, let's see yeah. if I... Yeah, <laughs> yeah she read the habit. <laughs> and and what, what happens when ducks fly upside down? Uh, they crack up. Oh, that's good, that's good. <laughs> That's good. Okay. <laughs> All right, here's a new one. Uh, the Chinese telephone book is not going to be published anymore. There are so many wings and so many wongs, people are winging the wong number. <laughs> well, that could be. <laughs> Jenny, thank you, you know, for... I get, on, I get on Facebook and I can see uh, these pictures from Japan and they're showing all the wong numbers I know well, yes. And all of her relatives are in Japan. Yes, and they're so wealthy. I'm, I'm looking at the kids and stuff that's going on in Japan through Facebook. Oh, isn't that nice? And yeah. the, and her and she comes from a very wealthy family. Yes, yeah, she does. Yeah. They live high on the hog, I tell you. And she's uh uh she is a uh, a, a music teacher in the Bronx. And yeah. she my grandson's a music teacher. She's a teacher. She's a teacher. Yeah, he, my grandson is a music teacher. Wonderful. Yeah, and uh, they they do quite well. They got a, a beautiful house and they got a nice little house down there right across from Central Park. Wow. Yeah, they bought it. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, but they're the ones that come and stay with me, so. It's only about... Ten thousand dollars per square foot across from Central Park. Well, I know they paid. They paid a phenomenal amount. Oh, oh. If, if they want, if they want to get storage there in the house that where they bought the apartment, it's fifty thousand dollars just to get storage. Yeah, sure, sure, <laughs> sure. Yes, no. yes, it is. Yes, it is. So they're on Fifth Avenue. They what? They're on Fifth Avenue. Oh, Central Park West. Oh, wow, yeah. that's a, whoo, is that a fancy address? Yeah, Central Park West. Oh, that's fancy. Well, it don't look that fancy when you go down there. Oh, it's, oh, no. They've redone that whole building that, that they're in. It's, uh, they stripped it all down and redone it. You know, it's an old, old building with this beautiful wrought iron and stuff, you know. It's prettier up here, Jenny, where we are. Sure. <laughs> one day, one day, it is enough for me in New York City. Uh, I'm ready to come home. I'm a country bunk and I can't get around it. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Yeah. Okay. Have a blessed day. And thank you for blessing it. Why do you delete the calls? Because I can't see them. I can't read them. They think that light blue on white is great. Well, it isn't. It's very difficult to read. And you just look at this cross-eyed and it comes up with the wrong screen and about five other screens that you don't want.
Well, I don't think it's nice for you to complain about this miracle, Glendora. Okay. I'm sorry. I take it back. You're a lovely phone. Let's see what the temperature is. Forty-six degrees and fair. No, it's really sunny. Now let's see if you can do this right. Hello? Hi, Glendora. Hi, oh, yeah. Hi, Brenda. Oh, hi, Brenda. How are you? Good. Yeah, did you still want to go to church? I mean, go to lunch today? Yes, I do, very much. Okay. So, we'll pick, Terry or I will pick you up. Um, you know, we'll pick you up. I think yeah, we, can't, we can't stay real late. We, we're going to stay for a little bit. Yeah, that's um, good enough. Because, yeah, because my brother, it's his 60th birthday, they're having um, a get-together. Why, sure. Yeah, so we have to go to that. Um, yeah, so we'll pick you up, okay? Yes, and I'm bringing a Amy's No Cheese Pizza, and it's delicious. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, so I'll, right. I'll see you around, what is it, 12 or 12.15 or 12.30? What time, Jerry? 12, 12.15? Around 12.15 or so, sure. And it's, yeah, it's uh, 46 degrees out and sunny. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you for doing that for me. You're welcome, dear. You're, 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 a little bit. Yeah, you're wonderful to do it for me. I'm thrilled. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. You didn't tell him a joke. Yeah, I should have. Now, do you have any other calls? People who left messages. Madeline says you have to clear all. I don't know what that's all about. But just do what they tell you. Clear all. Okay. Now go to the phone. And then go to dial and go to one, and go to... Please enter your password, then press pound. You have three new voice messages. Three new voice messages. Hi, Gloria, it's Brenda. I mean, hi, Glendora, it's Brenda. Um, I just wanted to call you and say that I think you still need one to ride today. Oh, yes, please. church, I mean, for potluck. Fellowship. <laughs> Give me a call because we can't stay for a long time because I have my, my brother's 60th birthday and we have to go to a party um, later in the afternoon. So give me a call. Okay, bye. End of message. To erase this message, press 7. To save it, press 9. To hear more options, to replay this message, press 4. To get envelope information... Hi, Gloria, it's Brenda. I mean, hi, Glendora, it's Brenda. Um, I'm just calling to see if you still need one to ride today for church, I mean, for Allah. Uh, and give me a call because we can't stay for a long time because I have my, my brother's 60th birthday and we have to go to a party um, later in the afternoon. So give me a call. Thank you, God, okay, for staying bye. with him until 60, because he's had some very serious health issues. End of message. To erase this message, press 7. To save it, press 9. Listen to your messages, press 1. To send a message, first voice message. Hi, Gloria, it's Brenda. Message erased. Next message. Hi, Glendora, it's Gloria calling. Um, did you need me to keep up? Hey, to bring it to the pop up at the church. 
Yeah. Call me and let me know. 312 Thank you. Thank you very much. No, Brenda's going to do it. To send a reply message, press 8. To save it, press 9. To hear more options, message erased. Next message. Hi, Glendora. We're getting ready for church. I'm going to give you my cell phone number. If you still want to come to church, you have to call me. Um, call me on 286-0934. Again, 286-0934. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye. End of message. To erase this message. Message erased. End of new messages. To listen to your messages, press 1. To send a message, press 2. To change your personal options, press 4. To disconnect, press 9. To listen to your messages, press 1. To send a message, press 2. To change your personal options, press 4. You have pressed an incorrect key. Personal option. To turn message waiting indicator on or off, press 1. To change administrative options, press 2. To record reading, press 3. For page of notification settings, press 4. To greetings. To change your personal greeting, press to select a standard greeting with your telephone number, press 1. To select a standard greeting with your name, press 2. Personal greeting, press 3. Your greeting has been recorded as at the tone, record your greeting. At the end of your greeting, press tab. Hey folks, the Chinese telephone book is not going to be published any longer. There are so many wings, so many wongs, people are winging the wong number. If you are satisfied with your greeting, press pound. Your greeting has been recorded as... Hey folks, the Chinese telephone book is not going to be... And so where does that leave us? With some very good meditation. Okay. Ginny Palmer. Brenda, confirm. Carl, 60. And X, now, next is to exercise the body. Do the calisthenics every day. Overcome the resistance. And appreciate God's body motion. Appreciate the body motion. So many people are without it. Wonderful to be able to move. Good morning, folks. This is the Sabbath. This is a Sabbath for some people, for Christians. Other than the Seventh-day Adventists who know very well that the Sabbath is the seventh day and that's Saturday. And the Hebrew people know that. What happened to thinking the Sabbath was on Sunday? Well, anyway, on the Sabbath, there's a, something that goes back several years to communion. And why was there a need for communion? Well, it was so much work to get up and do the purification and get dressed up and get ready for church and then go to church 
and then come home and do the things that the conscience told you should be done. That it just seemed that it did away with your closeness with God. So there seemed to be a need for communion. So it became a 10 minute Sunday morning thing, following purification and before going to church. So what do we commune about? And what is communion? Communion. Writing in the joy book. Communion. Hi, dot com. You got enough room? Communion is finding that inner peace, that peace with God. What did Sarah Young say and Ginny say yesterday? Take time, that peace deep within you. How do you find that peace deep within you? You get rid of ego. And that's the same thing that Buddha was saying. You get rid of desire. You get rid of ego and desire. And you go with the flow. And who is the flow? The flow is all of us, all of us working together, working together for the universe, not for ourselves, not giving ourselves the credit, but giving the universe and all of us together, working, creating, operating the grand universe. Thank you, Earth, for the spin, 650 miles an hour, every day, putting our backs to the sun so that we have nighttime to sleep, and putting our faces to the sun so that we have daytime to accomplish great things for the universe. And you, little kitty, you eat. You eat, and then you come back, and you want to eat some more. And then you stop eating, and you go away, and you never say thank you. Maybe at night when she lies on your chest and purrs so loud, she's saying thank you. Is that good water? That's spring water, you know. It's not tap water, it's spring water. Communion. Fellowship. Prayer. Touching that deep peace within. This is how you do it, isn't it? What we're doing right now. Taking time to do it. Instead of being out seeking self-attainment, self-aggrandizement, taking the time to do this. Establishing the relationship and understanding that you're just that you're some of it, and that all of us are together, and the wholeness and the oneness, and also Earth. Thank you for your water. Thank you for your soil. Thank you for the air, the ionosphere, the troposphere, 
the troposphere, the air to breathe that you can't be without more than three minutes. Thank you for the life, the life of a flower, the life that's in an animal, the life that's in a person. Somehow life and God are the same thing. The spirit in you and God and life are the same thing. When you die, the spirit leaves you and goes off somewhere else. And your friends try to find it. That's what you do, what we said yesterday. When your friend dies, instead of following the body and being lonesome, as the body's going to recycle and decay, you follow the spirit. You go after the spirit that left the body. You think what you will find, and then you won't be lonesome anymore. What should I do about a friend? A friend who all his life has rescued cats and taken care of cats and kept them alive. Cats that people would not adopt, but has given them a home for years and years and years, a decade or more, and taking care of these cats every day. And then the cats get sick, and then they need a veterinarian, and they go to the veterinarian. And the veterinarian charges so much. And this friend had three sick cats about three weeks ago and took them all to the vet. And the bill was a thousand dollars. And the vet graciously let the friend pay three hundred and thirty dollars a month, three months. That was fine. And the friend paid for the month of February, this month, it's all good, it's good. Then another cat got sick, so the friend takes the money saved up to repair the car and gives to the veterinarian. And then another cat gets sick, and he can't urinate, and he's going to die. So the friend takes the